because visitors, may I request the leader of the house. The public procurement law was passed by the National State House of Assembly in 2020. This paved way for the establishment of the Bureau for Public Procurement. The essence of this is to ensure probity, accountability, and due process in governance. But some heads of MDAs in the state are yet to be conversant with the workings of the newly established Bureau. It is for this reason that the National State Government has organized a two-week training for political and public office holders in the state. What we stand for as Bureau of Public Procurement, the National State Bureau of Public Procurement is an integrity center mechanism established basically to perform five basic functions. One, we have been established to ensure transparency and fiscal discipline. Two, the Bureau enforces strict compliance with rules and procedures. That's in procurement process. Three, our taxes will promote a new culture of effectiveness and efficiency. Four, our focus is to achieve value for money for whatever procurement that is being carried out, whether it's goods and services or works. And five, the last one is of public procurement is here to change our collective attitude and the way government business is handled. And with this law, a very, very important, one of the most important laws that we can think of. It is not something we can compromise. We are all stakeholders, we are all ambassadors, we must ensure that it works. There is no two way about it. We must change the attitude. All of it is not change the attitude and nothing else will be there. Why does that say the law of public procurement is relevant? The Excellency, given the decline of the federation account as well as the dwindling economy, all over the world, there has been an eminent cause for caution in every right thing in Nigeria to be physically responsible because we know that something is wrong in this country, economy wise. We don't need to be told. The unfortunate story of COVID 19. Especially the second wave, which is seriously ravaging the whole world, and as we said, increasing, has now become a team of great concern to all of us. Indeed, the recent increase in one salary is compensation is of both public and political officer, office workers across the nation, has also imposed a situation where government must, be adopt, must adopt the stringent culture of property and prudence, whatever little thing that comes in. Today, we excellency people are bombarded by countless, by countless competing demands. And there is a daily increase in cost of governance. The expectations in this administration is so high excellence, especially to us meeting the ever increasing demands of rural people who live in far flung distant villages, away from the immediate impact of our government. It is against this general matter of excellency that there has arisen a high expectation of a citizens of transparency on this present administration of his excellency and how they explain as it is noted and acknowledged as a people-centered and an all-inclusive government as can be seen. The national state government is more determined than ever to ensure prudent management of resources in line with global best practices. I'm aware that the theme of this training workshop, which is public procurement as a penalty for, government, for, for good governance in the national state, is actually coming at the right time. It is timely, well conceived, and coming at a time when government is committed to prudent management of resources to enable government to meet its task resources in bringing development to the good people of Masala State. Accordingly, the step must be taken to ensure that contracts are awarded and executed on a timely basis with cost effectiveness in the provision of goods, services, and execution of works with the little resources at the disposal of government. My dear participants, I need to reiterate that the result of this administration to continue to impart the culture of discipline, transparency and due process in the conduct of government affairs must be of help. This informs our decision to establish the Bureau for Public Procurement to achieve our objective in this direction. Let me pledge the result of this administration to accord the Bureau the needed support and indeed the maximum support that will give it for that to achieve its objectives. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is important to state that the participants here were drawn actually from public offices, including heads of the state tertiary institutions, commissions, Border parastatics in the service of Nasrallah State. 
the essence is the inculcated spirit of the procurement law in the practitioners in the conduct of government business. The two-week training was organized in collaboration with Charterhouse Consulting Limited and expected to equip public officials with the requisite knowledge of due process in service delivery and award of contracts. Nasri State Governor Abdullah Suli has appealed to President Muhammad Bari to establish the proposed Zona Institute for the National Agency for Science, Engineering, Infrastructure, NASENI, in Lafayette, the state capital. The governor made their peace shortly after inspecting facilities at the headquarters of the agency in Abuja. For the governor, Lafia is well situated to host the proposed institute because 80% of its population are involved in one form of agriculture or the other. I want to commend Mr. President for appointing the idea of your Zonal Institute for Agricultural Equipment. And I want to plead with you and call on Mr. President Muhammad Buhari because he's a fair person when it comes to that, to actually cite the regional one for North Central in Lafayette. <laughs> and the reason why I'm saying that is because, one, Nasarawa State has 80% of its own people in the area of agriculture. Secondly, what you are going to do today, most of these heavy and big commercial farmers are already present in Nasarawa State. Olam is producing rice in Doma on a 10,000 hectares of land and they have already, right now, commenced operation and they are cultivating roughly 50% of that land, that is 5,000. They are already producing two seasons of rice, as I'm talking to you right now. In addition, which is the one that is most important to any government. They are employing, apart from direct employment within their own land, and they are employing roughly about 4,000 of our youth in that area of their farming. But the one that is even more important is the area where they are engaging the outgrowers in places like Awe, places like Azara, places like Wuse, Aikiri, you know, all the way to Adudu, and indeed Doma itself, where they have several of these. In fact, recently the Japanese company came in and gave us as part of their own donations, you know, most of this equipment. Secondly, Fly Mills of Nigeria is today getting ready to acquire 20,000 hectares of land. 10,000 hectares for flour, that is through cassava, the other 10,000 hectares for sugar. In addition to that, Asman has already acquired 14,000 hectares of land and they have already started the process of cultivating and they are getting ready very soon for preparation and planting. By the, it will be the biggest rice facility for Asman on the 14,000 in the whole of Nigeria. <laughs> but the biggest of them all is what Dangote is doing in our local government. Dangote has acquired 68,000 hectares of land for sugarcane. And with that, they should be able to produce. A lot of people in natural states uh, still do not really know uh, the essence of uh, the establishment of the natural state health insurance agency. Can you help us better understand what this agency really do in natural states? Yeah, um, thank you very much for coming around to get more insight of what we do here in the National State Health Insurance Agency. Uh, like uh, the name implies, is um, an uh, agency of the government that was uh, established in 2018. You know, having had uh, a law passed, you know, by the State House of Assembly. So, but the operations of the agency came in 2019. Essentially, it's to administer the state health insurance scheme and in the course of administering health insurance scheme is to provide access to quality health care to the, the uh, citizens or the residents of Nasara states. Similarly, the aim of establishing this was to take out of pocket, you know, uh, permit for health care services, you know, uh, away from the residents of the states. And uh, 
ultimately to achieve universal health coverage. That has been, you know, the uh, the, the the preaching now by the United Nations, you know, and it's part of the Sustainable Development Goals to see how we have a population that is unhindered to access to quality health care without financial barrier. So it's a pooling system, it's just like you have uh, NHIS, so this one is the state you know, health insurance scheme. So in Nassau State, what we are doing already is uh, to have had uh, design of our programs and the aim is to reach every segment of our population. You know Nassau State is purely an agrarian state, you know, majority of our population, let me say, over 70% are in the formal sector of the economy. So we have uh, categorized our population based on, you know, the occupation. So we have the formal sector, which has to do with uh, people that you can trace their source of income, and that includes the public servant or the civil servant and the organized private sector. So we've got the large pool of the informal sector also, which we've already categorized. In it, we have uh, the private insurance. Anyone you know can just walk into our office and then uh, get a uh, premium paid and have insurance cover for one year. We also have a program for the students in the tertiary institutions. You know, as they resume uh, for the session, they pay an amount which gives them health insurance coverage for one year. That's for a session. The same thing for secondary school. The secondary school we are just about starting, but the that of the tertiary health institution, you know. Sorry, that of the tertiary institutions, we have commenced it shortly before the pandemic, and we had to, you know, uh, step it down. But for now, the students have resumed. In fact, as of tomorrow, we are going to one of the schools to go and distribute ID cards for them. So, still in the uh, informal sector, we have a program that is uh, nationwide now. It's actually a scheme called Basic Care Provision Fund, and it's derived from the 2014 National Health Act and that is supposed to have a fund set aside by the federal government to give access to health care to all residents of the country. But because the resources are you know, scarce and can't go around, so it's been limited to the vulnerable population. So in Nassau State, we are doing something like any other state across the country. So we have the Basic Care Provision Fund that is meant to cater for those that are vulnerable. And that was why we had to go to our way last week with His Excellency Gina A. A. Sule to have uh, that of the Basic Care Provision Fund, the money coming from federal government, flagged off. Uh, as a state, to complement that, His Excellency has graciously approved and has even released money to add up to what is coming from the federal government. And that one we are calling the equity program. So we've tagged it as State Basic Care Provision Fund. And that was why we flag off the enrollment in the special school here in Lafia, so that those that you know are there can access care. And we are using that to augment what the federal government is bringing. So it's going into the 13 local government areas that we have in the state. As I'm talking to you now, my team members across the 13 local government are already in doing enrollment. Some are training, and as they finish training, a day or two after, you know, enrollment comments. So these are some of the things that you know we do here in the State Health Insurance Agency and we are going to continue to do that. That of the former sector is being kept because uh, we had some issues with the labor, about deductions from you know their salaries, you know, like that. So uh, His Excellency is uh, doing a lot to see how to get this thing sorted out and then they, they will come on board. Now what do these opportunity start to benefit when they came to this scheme? Well, uh, anyone that is enrolled into the scheme, whether it is informal sector or formal sector, the implication of it is that when you go to access care, that's health care, you don't pay at the point of receiving care. What you might probably pay for is when, at the end of the day, diagnosis have been made, you know, like that, and you're going to assess drugs, and you pay 10%. That's called co payment. And then some huge uh, hospital bills, that we have to pay if you're not enrolled is taken off you. You know, major surgeries, like giving cesarean section, hanyography, hanyotomy, all these things are covered. And there are other things that are covered in the benefit package that, you know, space and time I know allow me to be able to list them. But as far, much as some very expensive investigations like CT scan, we do co payment. So we pay a certain amount of, in fact, we pay almost 70% of it. So those that are enrolled might just pay like 30% of that, you know. So it's, um, it comes in individual, you know, some 
and enroll as individual, some are enroll as household. And here household definition is, you know, spouse, okay, the principal dependent, you know, like that, with the spouse, and then you have four children, and uh, any other person you're adding, then you pay, like that. So our own household is defined as six persons. Example, husband and wife with four children. Let me simplify it that way. You know, so so some uh, get enrolled as a family, some get enrolled as you know individual. So, but anyone that is enrolled, these are the services you enjoy. All right. Already, uh, some local governments have already enrolled into this scheme, and some are yet to uh, be fully enrolled. Mm -hmm. uh, what's uh, why? Why is this so? Well, you know, we have 13 local governments, and then the terrain. You know, so we needed to follow them one after the other. So after the flag off, as I'm talking to you now, our teams are in all of them. So, and then the training, uh, we can't bring all of them to the same place because of the pandemic. So we decentralize everything. So some trainings have to go before the environment will start. So that was why everything is staggered. So, but at the end of the day, every local government is going to be, you know, uh, brought on board. And eventually everybody, that it's qualified, that falls within the category of those who call vulnerable who assess care. That is uh, the, the, the point we are. So, and the, the level of uh, uh, assessing healthcare is, you know, categorized again, primary services. For the basic care care provision from both federal and state, they begin to assess their healthcare from the primary healthcare centers. So, when they need to be refined, they will be refined to the secondary healthcare facilities, which could be general hospital or any private hospital that offers very Good, you know, healthcare services. If they need another services that are only offered in the tertiary health institution, they are referred. So every segment, every segment is being paid for by the health insurance, you know, agency. So it's a complete package from the primary services up to the tertiary services. So long as the services are offered for within the benefit package that we've designed. Uh, lastly, I think I'm forgetting we have another model. We call it adoption model which you've, you've adopted in Nassau State. So have these philanthropies that uh, feel that they have people around them that they usually pay for their hospital bills. So instead of paying them where, when they are sick, we've encouraged people to come and get them registered. You know, organize people, you know, organize your constituents. If you're, you know, a legislator or a commissioner or you might just be, you know, a businessman within your community and want to enroll people. Bring them, you pay for them, we give them ID cards, and then they are under your cover and will offer services to them. In fact, as I'm talking to you now, over 5,500 enrollees in Akonga local government had benefited from that kind of gesture. An organization came and then provided the kind of population that wanted them to come on board, paid for them, and we just issued them ID cards and they are already receiving you know, uh, care. So the same thing, some other good uh, Nigerians, uh, particularly some politicians around, I don't want to uh, mention <laughs> some names now, they are already, you know, thinking, they've collected forms and then they are getting them filled. In the next one or two weeks, we should get there and uh, get them enrolled and they begin to assess us. So I call on all, all Nasara State citizens to adopt communities, pay for them. It's better than usually when they have to call you, my wife is... Uh, in labor, has of total labor, and then you should come and pay for cesarean session. The best you can give them now is health insurance scheme, and then they stop disturbing you, calling you frequently to come and pay for their, you know, their hospital bills. So I encourage all of us to take that. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. yeah. The Nasara State Governor Abdullah Suli has appointed a local flashman as the new acting general manager of the Nasara Broadcasting Service (NBS). The new general manager was the director of news and current affairs and the most senior director of the station. He is an engineer of Obi local government area of the state. So you know, uh, MBS has been operating with, with a vacuum because the GM has been promoted to the position of a PS and we conducted interviews twice to find a GM and we were still having difficulties in trying to get the right GM that has our vision, has the understanding of the station, and also can be able to carry everybody along. You know, so that's why there had been a lot of consultations, and I believe the consultations could only be concluded if I visit MBS myself and talk to the, the directors. 
and that was part of what we we tried to come and do. So after we came and then uh, discussed, made consultations, we came to the realization that the best thing is to appoint an acting general manager. You know, and so the essence of appointing an acting general manager, you have to appoint the most senior person to be active. And we decided now to appoint the most senior director there who happens to be Mr. Fleischmann. You know, so he is the one who has been given the responsibility now to act for the position, you know, for the period. And then the essence of my meeting with the directors and with everybody else is to call on them to give him the maximum cooperation so that we can see that our vision being realized. The Nasser State Governor, Abdullah Suli, has summoned an emergency security meeting to forestall any attempt to adopt students or pupils in the state. Members of the displaced Dar es Salaam group are presently regrouping in some localities in the state. Some killer hitmen displaced from the southwest and other parts of the state are also resettling down in some parts of the state. The Security Council meeting is to provide solution to the security threats posed by the influx of these terrorists. The reasons for calling the meeting is because of the security concerns around the country and indeed uh, around the state. Uh, from what we have seen so far, there are renewed activities of these dislodged bandits. We had these bandits that were at O2 in total local government area that we were recently dislodged. You know, thanks to all our security agencies for the good work that you have done to dislodge them. Uh, unfortunately, uh, a lot of them being members of Darul Salam that have turned into Boko Haram are now or have now actually uh, regrouped in places like Balkono, Kabusu, Panda, Bahasha, Diyar, Ambaka, and then Gidan Rai in Nasarawa, uh, Karu, and Wamba local government areas, respectively. Also, the activities of what is happening in the southwest, especially starting with uh, Ondo State, and then recently what has happened to the House of Learning community in uh, Oyo State, had uh, worsened the situation, and we have continued to see influx of unknown Flani headsmen, uh, especially in Wamba, Karu. Doma and away local government um, uh, areas. So as a result of that, uh, we have also seen what is happening with school children. You know, where school children were originally from the beginning kidnapped in Borno State, then it moved to Kazena, it moved to Zamfara, came to Niger, and I strongly believe that uh, even though we see it returning back to Zamfara, we shouldn't be taking off that. We should be more uh, proactive and ensure that we take care of ourselves here in Nasarawa State.